What's up guys? We are commenting finally endings of the Nonary Games Zero Escape. Last time we were reaching a common point in the story but pretty sure that from this point on we all had different experiences. So joining me today are... Soccer prize! Hi I'm Anladium. All of the rest have been murdered by Zero, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the experience of the game, is that, like, as you go on, there are fewer and fewer people hanging around you, and you're like, oh god. What I really suffered is missing the prince, Snake. Snake? You said early on that Snake was your favorite, and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy um, that, right? It's always enjoyable yeah, yeah, yeah. when someone relates to someone who is about to... I mean, Snake is a fantastic character, and there's still a lot that you have to to deal with with him. You can imagine. Um, but yeah, I, as soon as you're like, yeah, he's my favorite, I'm just like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so enjoyable, really, and that's part of the um, that's part of the um, repeatability. I'm forgetting the mm -hmm. term, but that's part of the charm of any story when you get to experience it. But now with someone else. Yeah, it's always super fun for me to talk to somebody who's experiencing 999 for the first time um, because you never know what they're going to get in terms of like the first ending. You never know what kind of reactions you're going to get from people. It's super, super fun. And like I said, this is one of my favorite games. So like hearing people's reactions, I'm just like, ooh. Of course, of course. <laughs> so it's usually different. Um, you haven't gotten, let's say, one ending that happens the most often. <laughs> No, no, no. Usually um, there are three bad endings um, that are the most common that people get, uh, and that's the axe ending, the knife ending, and the sub ending. So, and as in submarine? Submarine, yes. Oh, wow. Definitely yeah. didn't get that one. And I really, I, I wish that um, Jack had gotten that one because I, I feel like that would have uh, messed with his head a little bit, honestly. Nice. <laughs> so we can tell you what we got. So Shelly, um, how far ahead did you get in the game the last time that you watched this game? I can pick up from there what happened. Uh, I remember the protagonist was dealing with a, a machine that involved a screw. But that was as far as, as I could get before, you know, I had to do something. So I'm not sure if that was potentially around the kitchen. It was. It, it looked filigree. The switch that he, your, you had to deal with was kind of had a filigree design. Okay, so I can wrap things up at least from my ending. So I was in the kitchen, and we got out of the freezer. After that, I chose to go to one of the rooms with seven. We and with Clover. And we found ourselves in front of a medical mannequin. Yes. So there were two bodies there. We had to get together the pieces. And by that time, Clover started telling me about this not being the first time that the nonary games had happened. She said that there had been an experiment and that her missing brother by then and herself had been part of that experiment. I also got, I believe in that part, a tale from uh, Seven about a missing Egyptian woman that was on a ship, that, that had been part of the Titanic, that had been part of the cargo in the Titanic, and that it was recovered. So I naturally, when things are uh, appearing, when the, these characters are telling you all of this, and you constantly wonder, how will this relate? And I was happy <laughs> to see that eventually, yeah, th those things were apparently connected. Because in the freezer we had heard about uh, the ice, that apparently at a specific temperature um, the ice would melt, but that this was not usual, it started at a particular moment, and apparently this Egyptian a woman who was frozen and was on the ship had something to do with that same ice. 
So we solved the, the puzzle. Evermore I got the impression that our director of this game that he really wanted the characters to speak between each other and the gameplay is almost like a justification in order for you to have something to do but the juiciest parts for me are really when these characters are speaking between each other and I'm totally okay with that for example with um, True Detective I like that it's the same thing the murder is just a justification so that characters are speaking between each other that totally works. I'm not sure, Anne, if you have gotten this, this sensation from this game that you enjoy so much. I mean, the dialogue is really where this game shines, I think. Like, I really... Sorry, I'm kind of, like, choking right now. Mm. Um, I like the escape room aspects of it. I think that that's really fun. Um, but really, really, what sells this game, what makes it so good, is just how people interact with each other and the, mm. the world building and the story building that you have there. Um, that's that's why I like it so much. So having these characters just talk to each other, and um, as you go through the different endings, you're getting like different character interactions and seeing like what the dynamic is with like this character and this character, and how they how they talk to each other. Of course. I love it. I love it. Like you honestly feel like these are like people that exactly. have like real emotions and feelings, yeah. and um, even if they're weirdos who talk about conspiracy theories all the time. Um, like they, they just feel more like realistic because exactly. they don't they don't feel like a cookie cutter of like ah oh, yes this is this is this person and you know they're gonna say something that somebody else could have definitely said but no like they each individually sound like speak in a certain way and have different things to to bring to the table and I love it I love it I think it's great absolutely I like that you can choose which characters will become your party. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been sadly, for example, RPGs that, or, or even other kinds of games like Mass Effect where there are these very interesting characters as well, but I can basically have the same gameplay because the character is, the, car, um, the conversations are very separated with, uh, from which is my party. No matter the party, I can get almost all of the dialogues. Right. And here it's quite the opposite. I had to really reflect about which door I want to go into thankfully not because of the capabilities of the characters instead it was because who do you want to meet which dialogues do you want to get so I went as you heard with uh, Seven and Clover because I hadn't had the chance I could also relate with Clover because my favorite character, his brother, was missing by that point yep, yep. <laughs> and I'm like man if someone can relate to my sense of loss, it could be his sister. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so we solve this uh, puzzle, we don't get the full information and you have to again meet with some characters. So at that point Ace was willing to almost sacrifice himself because the numbers didn't amount to what you needed in order to cross to the next doors. So he said I will stay behind. Yep. Mm. At that point I was um, positively frustrated because he was one of the characters I hadn't gotten a chance to really get to meet mm -hmm. uh, and I usually like a lot when there's asymmetry so mm -hmm. in other stories there will be, I don't know, 8 characters, 10 characters and you feel like oh I will get to meet all of them but it is far oh, interesting will. yeah yeah I know but for me <laughs> it is very interesting when there's Ten and I don't know, two disappear or get murdered, and you only get to meet eight of the ten or something like that. When there's some asymmetry, so I thought that this is it. I'm losing Ace so that you don't get too comfortable because we have uh, lost one of the characters. Now we're going to lose another one, and and this resonated with me because so far Ace was the straight man of the group. I like how purposeful he was. I'm usually that guy in our group, so <laughs> I could feel like his weight of, I just want to rest, man. <laughs> At some point he just says that and I'm like, I also want to rest too. Yeah, same, same. Uh, it, that happens with all narratives, but uh, also here that some uh, features of the characters should be, let's say, reflections of things that will uh, appeal to the audience. 
how classy a character is, how chaotic another character may be. So in this case, I really could uh, relate to the straight man just wanted to rest for a moment while being <laughs> heroic. Yeah, two birds went yeah. wrong. Yeah. I wish my naps were heroic. I will have <laughs> to, to, to look for a way, like... Uh, there's a zero murderer uh, uh, around here, around the studio, something like that. Time for me to heroically take a nap. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be fun. <laughs> On a related note, Shelly, you were mentioning that uh, 999, those numbers, meant something to you. And some of the characters are also reflecting on occasion about what the numbers might mean. So what did they mean for you? Now, the angel number 999 uh -huh. usually means your life mission is coming to an end Another important fa new phase is beginning. You are entering a period of your life's mission where many minor changes, major changes will occur. New beginnings in the near future, but also some possible modifications in your life path. You will also see people leaving and situations ending. Yet in the bigger picture for every ending, there is a new chapter. The new cannot enter if there is no room to do so. Oh. And where have you seen this symbolism, this meaning? Well, it's, it's, it's in the title, obviously. Nine characters, nine doors. No, I meant this, um, this interpretation, this explanation that you gave us, does it appear somewhere, like in the Bible, or where does it appear originally, do you know? Um, I, I really can't recall. But, I, but since you're saying there's different endings, and you said one is the fake ending, maybe perhaps that is... A chapter ending and a new one will begin um i mean the whole game is a chapter ending and a new one will begin um and i wonder you know there's the whole like implication of like 666 maybe it's a flip of that type thing um but yeah the whole game like i think that that number thing is extremely interesting because i did not know that i've never heard that before um and what people don't really get on the outside of this because it's such a desperate situation is that <clears throat> despite the fact that you're going to have horrific endings where people die in horrible ways um <clears throat> yeah yeah um y you really do have this game that's leading to a new beginning uh for better or for worse that's up to interpretation and you know it will continue on in the rest of the series on where that leads to um, but this is a very, very, very important starting chapter for many of these characters. Oh, so we get to see them again potentially in another game. Yeah, some of them. Mm, that sounds mm -hmm. that sounds fun. Okay, so um, it makes a lot of sense, Shelley, uh, that 999 is associated with these new beginnings, as Anne just told us. So. After I got um, to Ace's heroic nap, I had to choose another party and had to solve things again. So uh, eventually we get back to, to Ace, so we didn't lose him, definitely. And at that point I was able to go to another door and I definitely chose finally to play with Ace. So I got Ace and uh, Clover. And we found a murdered captain. A murdered <laughs> captain with the zero on his bracelet. And the uh, captain's quarters? Is that the, the room? Captain's quarters. <laughs> so the first question is is it zero? Um, the dialogue is, I don't know, it is weird and funny because don't you get it there's a lot of don't you get it they're mocking us don't you get it do i have to explain to you it's like a lot of times that you get these kinds of dialogues but i i chose to accept what john Pei was saying that that is not zero um but i do wonder who this captain is was it really just the captain of the ship he's the only sailor we have found so i don't have an answer yet um, I get more of the information of Clover and her brother being in this experiment and we eventually get to cross to 
I'm not sure if it's yet, uh, the the last door. I believe it's the last section. So in that mm -hmm. last section, we meet again with all of the characters, and June is telling me uh, Santa is such a nice guy because these guys could have crossed together all the way to the end, but Santa said no. We have to wait for all of us. But when we finally reach where the ninth door is located well there are some curious things so one of them is that um, there are two ninth doors two doors yep. with a nine yep. and the sarcophagus that very likely is the sarcophagus of the egyptian lady that we have heard well that is also there in a sort mm -hmm. of church or chapel something like that mm -hmm. and at that point Santa betrayed us. I didn't like that, but he betrayed us. He took out a gun that yep. they found in their own room when they were playing. I love that. While they were playing or while they were solving the, the puzzle. Out of the blue, that, that gun. Welcome, Primo. What's up? So, uh, he, he takes June hostage. My bro, I, I, I hated that that he took June hostage, and not because I like June, but because I liked Santa a lot. Right? Yeah, uh, he had attitude. I, I like that he always had an opinion, even though he sometimes digressed. I like that he was purposeful. He's uh, a sassy dude. Yeah. We had as a red herring the other woman. What's her, her name? Um, what, uh, Lotus? Lotus, Lotus, yeah. So mm -hmm. I had said that Lotus is too obvious as a, as a traitor. I believe she's a red herring. And she had been on, on point saying, well, we will leave some people behind. She was always saying that, but no. Santa, out of the blue. He <laughs> takes out the gun and he told us, um, I will cross, but only with few people. Um, we, we couldn't all cross, that was real. Right. And Seven was saying that he was the one who was going to stay behind. Because since there were two doors, it was possible for two groups to enter. And Santa out of the blue says, no, fewer people are going to cross. It's only me and certain other characters. I believe it was uh, Lotus and Ace and I believe June as well. And Santa. I believe that that's a, a smaller group. So we're left behind the protagonist, Junpei, um, Seven, and I believe Clover. Mm -hmm. And we only have the sarcophagus there in front of us. Uh, time is running out, we only had 30 minutes, something like that, left in order to escape. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready for my next puzzle. I can do this. At that point, we hear some noises apparently coming from the sarcophagus and I'm like, of course, uh -huh. I will crack this. There's a passcode here. I just have to look for, I don't know, the amount of candles. I was already making my own theories. At that point, bad ending. <laughs> I am surprised that you got the coffin ending as the first ending because that is not one that people normally get as the first ending. Mm. Um, so I was telling you earlier, there are six endings total and that one of them can be skipped entirely. The coffin ending is the one that can be skipped entirely um, because that's the route you take to get to the true ending, but you have to have another flag raised in another ending first before you can actually get through it. Mm. I was missing. So you, yeah. you almost made it to the true ending if you had done something beforehand. Okay, but is it possible to get the true ending as your first ending? Okay. Nope. Nope. Okay. You have to do another route first and get another um, piece of information and then come back and do the route that you just did that would get uh -huh. to the true ending. So, uh, there's definitely some interesting narrative design. Mm -hmm. Because as a player it can feel frustrating and I felt a bit frustrated that I got the impression because of the passcode that the sarcophagus have that, well, there you go, you're going to play a bit more, you, you can beat this. And then, nope, back to the, back to the beginning. Um, since you have told me that you can skip ahead, fortunately, I didn't feel that much of a frustration. But if I didn't okay. have that information, 
<laughs> and I just thought, you got about editing, that's it. I would be like, man, but I really made an effort. Come on. <laughs> it's, so, it's so close to, to being a frustrating experience. Mm. So it's very good that they included that that feature. I haven't used it yet. I, I just got way back to the first room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to do the skip feature. Um, like, it, it, it makes things go a lot faster. Um, and especially because, I mean, you could technically just go through and do, um, you would need the, the safe ending. Um, and then you could go back and do the ending that you you just got and go to the true ending. That's all you would have to technically do. Um, but like I said, there are, there are six endings, I think. They might have added a seventh in, in one version of it, but there's six traditional endings. Mm. Um, knife, axe, sub, coffin, safe, true. Okay. And um, that, so, so you got coffin. <laughs> so that part of the information that I didn't have in order to reach the true ending so that is something that I need to get but in another room a room that I it, did not choose it, it lives in another of the routes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's really good that we get a sensation even though there is a, a smaller game that there is a world outside of what I as a protagonist gets to experience other characters are playing and getting guns um, there's more information out there that I may not get mm -hmm. and it impacts directly the experience of, of my protagonist because I really don't like when sadly games push too much that you are the only agent of change in a world right and that's the massive majority of games I think you're right that it's it's interesting because you're realizing like these other characters are actually going through the same kinds of things that I'm doing and they're getting items like we're picking up stuff and we're commenting on stuff. They're doing the same thing just in a different room. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be bad because then Santa gets a gun. Um, <laughs> um, but Don't it, trust it, your um, Santa. Don't leave your Santa unattended. Oh man, man. Um, once, once you get Santa's, uh, Santa's little monologue story at one point. I forget which ending it's in, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I love Santa to pieces. He's a great character. Um, but yeah, it, it's... And it's something to think about of... And, and they will... They will talk about this, like... How is it relevant to you as a player that you would have to go back to another ending in order to get information that would then take you through to a different ending? Like, how does that work? And it's mechanically played into the narrative, and I love that. Uh, I am um, already think, getting that sensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to recommend this game, is that it does so many weird things in terms of like the actual narrative and the gameplay, um, that without these certain gameplay elements, the narrative would not work. Mm. And so they, they kind of mess with you in the sense of how, how they're using mechanics such as multiple endings, um, there's another mechanic that I will mention once everybody has gotten to the end that is is a huge, huge mechanic um, that is extremely narratively important. Um, and it's not something that you even notice is happening. It's fantastic. Oof. It's fantastic. You're just hyping us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do, man. <laughs> Well, speaking of fantastic, I actually did look up the meaning of the number 60 of 666 that you said could have been 999 in reverse. And you were actually on point with that theory. Here's what it says. Seeing the number 666 isn't a cause for alarm because the number is more good than it is evil. The angel number 666 is a reminder that you are yet to tap into your true potential. You are a spiritual being with infinite possibilities. Oh. And this is usually str strongly linked with fresh beginnings. This number serves as a gentle reminder for, to prioritize your own well-being. You are about to embark on a series of new experiences. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Interesting. Uh, the two of them working together is, is a, a, an interesting idea there. Um, so, so you were actually on point with your theory. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I mean, there, there's <laughs> purpose, naturally, in having the numbers as uh, something that can be interpreted in so many ways. That's the richness of symbols. 
the game is very economical in terms of its assets. So many places inside this very big ship look the same, like great yeah. doors or the fancy holes, but where there's only chairs, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, so naturally the characters and the symbols have to shine, they have to be interpreted in different ways, even the keys get the Saturn and the rest of the planets. Right. That gets me thinking into the nature of the experiment that Clover uh, mentioned. So I already got until she says that they were attempting to find out about um, Ah, what's the name of that of that thing of being able to share information but with the mind? A morphogenetic field. Uh huh. They, they call it that. Um, right? with that you have the sender and the receiver. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that that can be only triggered by danger. Yep. So it's an original hypothesis, or at least I, I hadn't heard of that, but it juxtaposed with real ships and with just enough of. Mm, uh, familiar legends like mummies around that can come back to life and with wacky characters who do affect the, the real world with their crazy theories. For example, Clover. Clover gave me a bookmark out of his own craziness because that triggered him. However, that bookmark helped me in order to get Clover calmer. Yeah, to trust you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it has. I really like when when it's done this way. Items should not be, let's say, too clear cut. What's their usefulness in games? Mm -hmm. Ah, I really don't like when it's all keys and when it's all uh, crates and when it's so utilitarian. That's at least for me part of the appeal of the human experience. That things um, you improvise their solution or the solution sometimes out of the way, she will react to a bookmark with a clover. Yeah, and I mean, you never know what's going to matter to somebody in real life. So, like, you know, that there might be some silly kind of like trinket that, that I have a lot of meaning with. And, uh, you know, somebody else is like, okay, well, that's stupid. Um, but that's how life is. Like, that, her reacting intensely to a bookmark, like, you wouldn't expect that, but she did. Absolutely. Um, also, I just looked it up. The morphogenetic field, um, is an early 20th century uh, idea. Mm. So it is a real concept, mm. um, but it is uh, obviously not like the clearest of science there. <laughs> of course, of course. It's um, on the... There, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, it's like the alchemy, potentially. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's one thing that um, I really appreciate about appreciate about Uchikoshi's writing is that he really brings in a lot of things that are set the in, in the real world and it, it could potentially be there but like you know it, it's it's outlandish but not completely outlandish so. uh, something that I believe from the very beginning gives you that atmosphere is the ship that you mm -hmm. wonder the Titanic the sister ship uh, Bobcat mentioned the other time that they changed the name of the ship. It's fun how they play in this gray area of what is real, of what's about to be real. Um, with games, we I, I really wish that we played more with this gray area. We mm -hmm. sometimes go with way too much um, escapism. Naturally, that, that's another area that people can enjoy. But we don't do enough of these grayish areas showing the possibilities of, of real life, of what's very close to be and not be. In this case, I really like that, for example, the, the theory of bodies being preserved for a super long time. I mean, people are also researching that. that that's for real. Uh, maybe that is, at least for me, the closest one to be real so far. Right. Yeah. The, the one mean, about there's... transmitting concepts sounds wackier for me. Yeah, 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 but I mean, like, there's the whole, like, conspiracy theory that, like, Walt Disney's been frozen forever, um, which is not true, but, um, you know, th th that's been around for ages. Like, there is this idea of, like, some kind of ice freezing that can maintain a body. Um, so, 
You know, some of these things are rooted in, in real world ideas, if, even if it's not like completely on point, but it, there's enough feasibility to some of these that you're like, well, you know, I can see where they're coming from on here. And like, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't prove you wrong, so. Yeah. And those are great <laughs> conversations. I mean, that works very well. These kinds of theories that leave you thinking, well, it could be for characters who love their tangents, who will be very character driven, who have their unique personalities. So, so far, I was surprised when Seven, who looks like a serious dude, well, mm -hmm. he shared the theory of the mummy. <laughs> and Santa, well, he already had his time, we commented him. Clover being part of an experiment with her brother. And I believe uh, the other woman, she also shared the theory. I believe June. Lotus is the one who told you about morphogenetic field to begin with in uh, the room with the, the the dog picture. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She told us about that, of course. June also had her own moment. Maybe in the Ace, freezer. Yeah, 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 in the freezer. Maybe Ace hasn't had a tangent like that so far for me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So he he has been again the straight guy so far. Potentially in what I haven't played yet. He gets his own crazy theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I am thinking. <laughs> and I believe that, well, sadly the prince hasn't given me anything else. I like that Clover gets very happy that her brother is still alive. So we, we found a body that had exploded. Yep, in so, his clothes. Mm -hmm. So, what we know so far, what we thought so far, is that there were there were two traitors who got inside with uh, the prince, but left him there. And later, unfortunately, Clover says that it couldn't have been her brother. At this moment, however, I don't recall what gives her that certainty. Um, do you recall any? His bones. Um, he had a a fake um, bone in one of his arms because of a car accident when he was a kid. Ah, uh, she has explained so, that to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, when when Jupe is like talking about seeing the body or something, he talks about like, oh, you know, I saw this bone split. She's like, wait a minute, you saw what bone split? And um, when he explains it to her, uh, she's like, oh no, that's not him. That's not him. Yeah, like because he, he has a bone. That, that, He's the one he's the, human who doesn't have a bone. That, that bone is fake, so uh, <laughs> so that's how she figures it out. Is yeah. it like that one particular bone would have not been a real mm. bone on him, and um, and so that's what gives her her hope is that you know just because you saw an exploded person in his clothes doesn't necessarily mean that it's him. So then the question becomes, where is he? Of course. Of course, and I want to find him. That that is really my greatest motivation at the moment. <laughs> finding out the truth about him. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm as interested about the true ending. I really want to find him out because Clover hasn't uh, told me yet what you said about that accident. Ah. She said, "I will tell you later." I believe. Ah. Mm -hmm. The bone. Yeah, she only um, said, I am very happy because if you saw the bone, it's not him. And that's in another... Is he a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the good news is um, you you get to find out a lot more about what happened there once you get on your uh, your true ending route. So um, you, you get, to, get to learn more about where he went and what he's doing. So I, I, we, we need to make use of this opportunity in order to share more theories and we'll see mm -hmm. if they, they do happen. So, so yeah. far we really nailed it that uh, Lotus was a red herring and that mm -hmm. another character would betray us. Mm -hmm. Now what I think might happen with the prince, so the prince potentially snake is acting on the previous is following up on the previous experiment. Mm. So Clover has said that the two of them were part of this previous experiment looking into the transmission of information with danger. Mm -hmm. And it was very emphatic, with danger. Yep. So I believe that 
snake is doing something risky but trying to use what they both know of this first experiment in order to solve this second time. Mm -hmm. Getting himself into something potentially more dangerous, but that can fortunately at least help himself and his sister. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and Jack has shared that he, he still suspects June. Um, doesn't have a reason why other than he just suspects her. Um, and I, I, I do want to uh, indicate to him, there is an ending where June dies. Mm. So. I have um, to say that sadly, the protagonist and June are the characters who are not clicking as much for me. Oh man, okay, so I will not even lie to you, Junpei is one of my favorite characters ever. Mm. I love Junpei. Mm. Um, and, and Junpei is in all three of these games. Mm. Um, he's he's the one character that's in every single one of them. Well, I guess yeah, June Akane is in all three as well. But um, Clover's in two. Mm. But um, Junpei is such a good character, and the way that they end up building him up throughout the narrative is just so well done. Um, mm. And it, it, it might take a while to click with him. If you click with him at all, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like the fact that he's just kind of like a regular dude. Like he was just a college student. I think he's doing like some kind of like stock market economics type thing. Uh, Uchikoshi might have like retconned it so he's like in crypto or something. I don't remember exactly what he's... I, I remember he said something recently about that. But because um, you have to remember this is also set in the future from now. Oh, I didn't recall that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forget which year it's set in, but, uh, hey. I have, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I, I, haven't, I haven't played this, or have any idea what it's about, but I know you talked about Santa with a gun earlier. This isn't like Santa Claus, is it? No, 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 no. Okay, I, I did I was just wondering, I was concerned for the welfare of the elves in the North Pole. <laughs> With no, Anne's a... game recommendation, you do have to ask those questions, yeah. Anything you're right, you're right. You're absolutely right. You do have to ask those questions. Uh, 2027 is mm -hmm. when this takes place. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't recall that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So... No, you're good. I don't like when female characters throw themselves at the hero. I really ah. don't like that. I mm -hmm. really... Because, well, we have abused that as an industry. And mm -hmm. you get a lot of people who internalize that way of thinking. And sadly, they behave that well and have those expectations in the real world. Right. So I really don't like that sometimes she will... Um, when I won't do anything, she will be just, Oh, if we were just in the shower together. Is I'm there like, a reason Whoa. she's doing it though? I have been wondering that. And I know that if I spend more time with her, maybe this will be more reasonable. But I really wanted to get to know the other characters because, because no, I had fair. already spent time with, with her. Yeah. That's fair. I'm just saying there might be a reason why she's sure. doing it. Sure, sure, sure. That's why um, she's a bit of a wild card. And I agree with, with Jack that mm -hmm. she seems to be your friend, potential girlfriend. But that must be a must for something else. I'm not sure if a kind of trauma potentially. I wonder, I wonder. Uh, you get to learn a little bit more about their time in school. I don't remember which ending it is in. Um, I mean, honestly, the good thing about this game and the fact that you can, like, skip forward is that there's important information in every single one of the routes. Um, and it nice. builds everything up to the very end. And so, like, being able to skip forward through stuff you've already seen makes it so much easier to get through all that. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm actually so surprised you didn't land on one of the ones where people die um because jack landed on the knife one mm. um and yikes that's that's quite a quite one to start with so you get murdered in that one um yes yes okay um in all of the in knife sub and axe you get murdered mm. in every single one of those you get murdered mm. um so 
It's a. Uh, I look forward to getting to the trending. Well, and then you have to start thinking about like, well, what what's the commonalities in these different endings, and who's doing what, and um, is, is there something that I'm missing here? Yeah. And once you once you actually get to the true ending and get like all the pieces fit into place, you're like, oh my god, now I understand what was happening in those. I know what was happening. I understand why I died. I really look forward to that eureka moment. The replay value of story driven games is somewhat uh, hard to achieve. That's why many colleagues, especially when they're looking for funding, like we do, uh, will get that comment from investors who say, oh, story driven games, well, you finish it once and players may not continue playing it. I have heard from a very sophisticated investor that the best game is something like chess. You can have infinite number of combinations, infinite number of matches, and it never ends, and you get infinite replay value. So there have been, fortunately, some games, like we're playing right now, who try to give replay value and in different ways. This is one of the riskier ones, because they're using uh, multiple branches. <laughs> Your co-host. He yeah, has some um, inputs thanks, Game Boy. on the potential of yeah. replay value. Um, yeah, and so that's also something to consider is that um, this was a low budget game. Um, this was one of Uchikoshi's like first big games. Big. Um, it was kind of I um, did not do very well financially. Uh, the the but it second has a game. Following, was, right? uh, huh? People comment on it, so it's like a, a cult hit. It's like a cult, like cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a cult classic, and so like. I think I've mentioned, I, I randomly picked this up when I was working at GameStop. Um, it, I, we got like maybe one or two copies. I was like, you know, whatever, this looks interesting, I'll play it. And I loved it. I was obsessed. I've played this game, even knowing how it ends, probably at least 10 times since it came out. Like, yeah. I love this game. And I love how everything is just built up with it. Because um, everything has a purpose, everything has a meaning, even if it seems just like it's throwaway nonsense. And that's something that um, Uchikoshi does very, very well with games, is that even if something seems like it's like pointless or a red herring or whatever, there's a reason for that. Mm. I look forward and it to matters. Um, sadly, with games, especially the narrative, is something that hasn't been, let's say, as... Mm, Uh, as purposeful as we're playing mm -hmm. right now. So there are different distinctions of games. For example, there are story driven games like we're playing right now, but many are art driven or mechanically driven. So the equivalent that we have in, in narrative in, in short stories, in novels of Chekhov's gun, mm -hmm. that's definitely not the case with games. Like many times the story will be just a coding so that the dude can get from shooting to from point A to all the way to point B, and there are some dialogues there so that you don't get too tired out of shooting all the time. Right. And here I look forward to this, that everything I'm hearing is justificated. Even when at face value, there are so many tangents. Mm -hmm. These people don't get that they're about to die if time goes up. This is really beautifully balanced with not having the actual counter. like Right. You only hear about it via dialogue and that's it. So I got the very uh, pleasing sensation of I could relax with this game. Mm -hmm. At some point I learned uh, the, the puzzles, while they're, well, they're challenging, they're not too complex. So right. I could play by the end of, the, of my adult life, by the end of the day, with a nice drink next to me. And <laughs> I actually thought of you, Trainer, because I was thinking like uh, when I was younger, you would always get at the arcades these messages saying, winners don't do drugs. So I'm like, is it unhealthy that now I look forward to the end of the day with the nonary games and with my drink in order to relax? Is it wrong on my, on my end? It, this is the first time that I'm drinking with a game and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Because usually I can't. I either have to focus on something mechanically intense 
or I will be doing something else. I will be reading an actual book. So this is the first time that I could kind of mesh these worlds. Nice. Mm. Nice. So, so you're getting to relax even though it's like a horrific, everybody's gonna die situation. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> the art also helps me a bit, you know, because fortunately the avatars are likable for me. I love the sprites. I love the sprites. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Um, I, I, I Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, and everybody looks so different. Like, nobody really looks at all the same. Um, so you, you have very interesting character types that you can look at like the difference between even like clover and snake and they're related like it's insane like they look so different i um, need something so, go ahead go ahead i was gonna say so there's that variety that you have too that, that you're getting to look at people that don't just like look the same like mass effect has some of that that everybody kind of looks same-ish yeah um you don't have that here oh yeah and i love that they react on each other's appearance usually you will have the wackiest the, the weirdest of parties and uh, this is my ghost dude and this is my pamper dude in my party and let's just go ahead and that's it but here i like that sense is like can you get some clothes Lord? <laughs> i'm uncomfortable being with you in the same place i'm like Oh wow! At, for once, I'm getting that in a way in a game. Yeah, yeah. Like they actually a few times mentioned like, "Hey, maybe you should like put something on," uh, which I, I wonder if like is some kind of like uh, like messaging uh, of having these these types of characters in, in like a weird clever way. But also, it might just be because like they want to do that and they want to have like a sexy lady character in there. I don't know. Um, it can be all of them, yeah, it can be both. It could be all of them. It could be some kind of, like, commentary on it while also just having a sexy lady. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, there's also a scene with uh, Junpei and Lotus that, that something comes up like that. And Thanos has a few things as well, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I want to hear those reactions. I've already gotten that uh, the brothers don't look at all like brothers. Yeah. Uh, again... There's so much low-hanging fruit from games that I fortunately experiencing at the, for once here. Yeah, we have so many interesting characters visually, and mm -hmm. we don't uh, treat them as as characters, but more like well, just objects in a game world that will shoot, that will jump, that will react mechanically to things. And I like that here we finally have them as people who are alive as real people commenting on each other. I like that, uh, for example, some of the more utilitarian characters, like Seven, he's actually one of the... Uh, he has more reactions with his pride because he'll be sometimes very serious and sometimes he will be like yelling. He has this... Yeah. The, to the other extreme. <laughs> Not just with, for example, Ace, he will be always like in control. So there's even variation between them, because as you say, for example, Mass Effect, Bioware, you will more or less get some sort of, uh, okay, we have, we need them as serious, we need them as passionate because you trigger their uh, loyalty mission or something like that. We need them to, on the contrary, to reject you. We need the rejection animation. And here, no, they have uh, intense differences so far in how they can react. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And I think that there's even some scenes, I could be wrong on this, where they actually mention, like, physicality. Because, like, they, they talk about how big Seven is as, as a character. And, I mean, you can see that with his sprite, but he is a big dude. Um, and, and that is mentioned a few times, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have forgotten that. So, for the next one, we, we should set as the objective reaching the true ending. I mean, it's going to take a little bit of work to do that because, um, you know, you do have to get through some other routes, but um, I think that that's the best way to handle it because otherwise we're going to run too much into, like, everybody's getting different endings and how we're going to handle that type scenario. Sure. Um, and I think once you get your first ending, it is fair to find, like, a spoiler-free ending guide. I think that that is completely A-OK -okay to do. And probably a good idea to do, um, just because it makes your life a little bit easier to know, like, this is this is how I'm going to do this kind of thing. And what 
might even happen, um, depending on mood, is that some people might even just do, like, I need to do this route and then this route to get the true ending and then go back and do the other one. That, that's also a possibility. Um, so that you get the full story, but um, I think that that's the best way to handle it so that nobody gets, like, foiled. Makes sense. So we'll aim for that. I look forward to um, finally closing with the Ripley value of story driven games. I, I mm -hmm. like that there's a very clear incentive here of finding more answers. And I like that there's equivalent of Chekhov's gun now that you have mm -hmm. mentioned it. Because for, for real, I hadn't gotten that impression yet. I got the sense that maybe some things are more about the atmosphere that characters here like to go on tangents. So I look forward to being how everything is connected. Because that's very everything hard to do. Everything is connected. Very hard to do. Even with um, uh, an economical game like this one. Mm -hmm. Super hard to do. Yeah, everything is connected, including the mechanics of the actual game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so on that note, we can finish for today. Thank you everyone for joining us. I look forward to Anne still laughing at our predictions and how we attach to characters. <laughs> bye bye. And bye to your co-host too. Bye. Yes. Bye. <laughs> bye everyone. Have a bye all. Bye.